If you didn't know, Canva has released a brand new update this year, so in 2024, and it's called the Canva Glow Up. So it's pretty much a new Canva interface. Now this was rolled out in part to 1 million users a few months ago, and it is now starting to get rolled out to all of us. And so I wanted to give a brief tutorial on how to use Canva on a basic level, and also some of the updates around the actual interface itself. I've done a video on some of the features of this update in a previous video, which I'll link here. But this one's gonna go into more of the nitty gritty on how to actually use it. And I know there's a couple of nuances to the new one that are confusing and tripping a few people up. So I wanted to step through a few of those as well because I think it's an incredible update you're gonna really love. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can take advantage of programs like Canva to create their own incredible brand and graphics because DIY graphics do not need to be unprofessional. So this is a peek inside my Canva and it has got the new update in it. Some of the big updates to this home screen area is this side panel, which has your start area um, and some recent designs. I really like this because it means that I can star any of my main designs. So say for example, for my new tutorials, I've starred this post by hovering over it and clicking on the star and that makes it appear here. So I'm, I've starred personally about ten, five to 10 different designs that I'm using on the regular, like at least every single week so that I can come back to them really easily. So this side panel, I'm really enjoying. To open up one of these designs, all you need to do is hover over it and press open up in new tab and it will open it up in that new tab. Otherwise, most things are working as you would be used to on the old canvas. So when you wanna create a new design, just press create a design and you can duck in there and type in as you would the size of the design you wanna create. So I'm gonna type in Instagram post and I'm gonna choose Instagram portrait post here and open that right up. And so it's gonna open it up in a design here. This update applies to both the Canva app and the Canva desktop. I'm currently using the desktop, but the Canva app works quite similarly. Now down the side, this is quite similar to what you'd be used to. We've got the design here, which talks about our templates. We've got the elements here, which are all the same. The big difference as well is it feels a lot lighter. They've changed the background to be lighter than darker, um, which is really beautiful. It just kind of feels a bit more open and clean um, and I'm totally digging it. We've also got our text in here. So if you haven't used Canva before, pretty much in here, we've got all your different shapes, different graphics. You can find stickers and photos and videos and even they've got audio now, charts, frames, tables, all of the different things. And when you wanna find something in particular, all you have to do is search it. So if I was to type in flower here, you'll see lots of flower graphics, flower photos, flower frames, all those bits and pieces are right inside Canva there for you. We've also got our text section, which again is relatively similar to what you'd be used to. We can add a text box in here. We've also got magic write now in here and type in a specific prompt for if you want to help actually typing out your text. Um, and for me, I've got my brand kit loaded in here. So if I click on this, it's gonna add in my brand font heading. Speaking of brand kits, we've also got the brand kit down the side here. So for me, for my business as a Canva Pro user, I can add in my brand logos, my brand colors, fonts, uh, my brand voice, my brand photos, graphics, and icons as well. And so that's all there for me to access. You can edit this inside the home screen or you can edit it straight in a design as well. You can see here, if I click onto photos, I can press edit and I can add in any photos just inside this area too. I don't have to go back to the home to edit that, which I find is a great update. You then got your upload section, your draw section. None of these are new Your projects and apps. And down the bottom here, we've got any apps you've kind of recently looked at or all of your folders. The folders up the, the folder structure is a little bit trickier for me here. It kind of scrolls on for absolute ages of pretty much any folder or app that you've opened recently. Um, but if you're looking for those, they're there. And you can also access all of your pro projects and folders inside this area here. And you can see everything as per normal. Now, a big thing as well is you can take away this side section. So if I click on this little cross here, I can close this and my design is now full. But the, probably the biggest change is the additional sidebar we get now. When you click this three hamburger menu, you can press open menu and it's gonna open up this area here. This obviously allows you to access your brand kit and templates. And also that sidebar that I showed you at the start where I have my starred graphics, I've got those in there as well, which I find really great when you wanna open something up. Something that's been tripping a lot of people up is when you click on a new design. So say I click on this design, I, it's gonna open it straight up over the top of the design I am already in. And you'll see here that I haven't properly opened this up yet. It's still got like file and open a new tab up here. But if I click on the design here, it's gonna close all that down and have this as something that I can then go in and edit. If I go back here, back to my original design, open up that menu and I click on this, you can also press open a new tab here and that's gonna open it up in a brand new tab so you can edit it there. That's the way I prefer to open up new designs because it means that I'm not losing the current tab that I'm working with. And then when I wanna get rid of this side menu, all I need to do is press this cross and that will disappear and it will open up the design ready for me to edit again. Now, the biggest change is possibly the new menu. So instead of things being over at the side here and everywhere else, we've got this new kind of pop-up menu that pops up depending on what you've selected. So for me right now, I've got selected this text box and up here has popped up everything to do with text. So I've got my font here, sizing, coloring, bold, italics, underline, all capitals. I've got this option here to change the alignment, 
got my dot points, my letter spacing, transparency, effects, animation, position. Anything that doesn't fit in this top menu, say if your if your browser was a little bit narrower, comes up at this side menu. So if what you want to edit in the text isn't available or whatever you're changing, you can press this see all button at the side and that's going to open up the full plethora of options for you to edit that. So you can see I've now got the effects all opened up here, all of my different font options and every other option down here. This is where your position tab is hidden. If you're ever playing with your layers in your design, wanting to align things, this is where your position is hidden. Um, and if I want to then close this, you'll see that it's then popped up again because I've unselected the text. It's only got this small little menu here, but if I click on the text again, it's brought that back wide again. So if I want to edit this text even more, I can click on this effects here and that will bring everything up at the side. So pretty much everything is kind of just hidden a layer deeper. Some people have found this frustrating as you have to click a few more times, but I found Canva has been updating this to be actually quite user-friendly. And so once, you, once you've taken the time to learn how to use it, it's actually going to make things a lot faster for you. So similarly, if you want to add, add a shape in here, I can go to elements, add in this rectangle, add in this square by clicking on it and it will drag itself in. And you'll see here that the options I have with this are a little bit different to what I have with the text box. I've now got an option to change the colors here too, my border style, my shape style and my rounding. This is a little bit of a new feature in here of having this corner rounding option, which I find so, so useful. You can add in your border weight here as well. And you can do the same thing when you insert a photo too. So if I just go down here and insert an image, click on photo. And what I can do is again, I can round the corners right in here. I don't have to insert it into a frame. I don't have to do anything fancy. I can also add a border into this, which I find so, so useful. When I want to change the color, I just click on that black and change it to whatever color I desire. You'll see in here all the other options we have for our photos too. We've got background mover is right here, just one click away, which is so useful. And all of your other options will be inside this edit button here. You can see inside here we've got the adjust feature. So this is if you want to just do classic image adjustment, so your lightning, your darkening, all those different bits and pieces. And we've also got the magic studio here. So I have background remover, magic grab, magic eraser, all of these goodies. We've got all our normal filters, all our normal effects in here, just making sure you're always swiping across to see all the different options that are available to you. Another one here is apps, which has been updated even more so to include videos, which is so, so useful and a lot of different other mockups available. And again, just making sure you're always sliding across to see all the different options here. Blend is another new one. It's de definitely worth experimenting with. When you want to update the background of your designs, all you need to do is click on this background here click on the color and you can change these backgrounds to whatever you would desire. If you ever want to play with the layers in your design, I mentioned this earlier, all you need to do is click position here and you can see we've got this arrange panel and the layers panel. The layers panel allows us to select and drag different things into different places. So say for example, this box that's hidden under my photo, I can drag that on top and then that is readily available for me there. I'm going to quickly show you that blend tool that I referred to a moment ago, just to show you something a little bit fun. So if I actually go here, I've just typed in woman in dress. I'm just going to click on here and find woman in a dress that looks a bit fun. So I'm going to grab this lady here. I'm going to crop it down. I can crop an image by pressing, by using these little rectangle handles. So I can change the sizing by using the circular handles in and out. And these ones here go to just cropping, crop down the side here. I'm actually going to see if I can add her into my flower field. So I'm going to drag her there. Then I'm going to select my background image, go to edit, navigate down to apps, scroll across to the blend tool, click on blend. Then I'm going to select both of these images. So I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard select, and I've got my back one selected. I'm going to hold down shift and select this one as well. So now I have both images selected. I'm then going to select blend image. Now Canva is going to use a bit of AI to kind of work out how I can combine these two images together. And you'll see here, Canva's actually taken away the background and it's added, it given me a few different options here and it's kind of changed the coloring of the lady, cut her out. Um, it's also done a lot of AI to it. This looks only a tiny bit creepy. <laughs> I think this was a bit of a miss, but you kind of see the idea of how it works. It's put things together and it's tried to make sure that this image suits this graphic perfectly, which I think is quite clever and hopefully only continues to get better. Now, another feature I wanted to show you is the Canva grab. So I'm actually going to grab this lady again. I'm going to insert another photo for you. So I'm going to grab this one here and you'll see there's a lot of different elements inside this graphic. And I'm going to go to my edit feature. I'm going to Magic Studio and select Magic Grab. Now Canva is going to then look at my image and instead of just grabbing one part of the image and just assuming that's what I want, I can actually select different parts of it depending on my particular needs at the time. So you'll see that Canva has like selected different elements of this. I've got the lady selected. If I hover over her, she goes in purple. I've got the different fruit things here. I've got the basket of flowers. I even got the plant in the background and I can actually click and I could go click, click, click. If these were the things that I wanted to select or I could unselect them by clicking again, or if there was something that I wanted to select that wasn't selected, I can click on it and it'll wait a moment and actually try to select that object. Say if I was happy with 
with that, I could press grab. So Canva is now actually going to remove the area that I've selected out of the image. It's kind of going to replace the background with AI. And it means that I then have this part of the image by itself. This is a great thing to do if you want to use a background remover feature, but you don't, but you want to actually select different parts of it. So you see here, if I bring this away, it's selected in the background here. It's felt like that needs to be some papers in the background. If I'm actually just going to delete that. If I actually wanted this, this part and this part by itself, I could then have actually just selected that and then I have that as an image by itself. So I'm just going to spend a couple of moments making an actual design out of this. I'm going to delete this lady and actually put pop, pop, pop in the original back in. Maybe add a bit, a bit of a corner rounding to it, a little bit of a border for something a little bit fancy. Maybe I'll add in a background image. So if I go purple flowers, potentially I like this one here and I could just insert this image right click on it and press replace background. And that's going to be nicely in the background for me. I could go into my elements here and maybe type in purple flower, but go over to the graphics tab rather than flowers. And I could maybe add in a, a couple of different graphics in here if I wanted to. Press duplicate, create another one. I could then add in some text, go to my text area, type in a heading. If I wanted to change the font here, I can just click on my font here and I could change it to something that's maybe cursive. I can change the color of my font by clicking on the text here. If I want to choose a color from within my design, I can just press add new color and I can either select to choose any color or I can press this eyedropper tool here and I might select the purple from my flowers down here. Now, potentially I want to make sure that my text is more readable here, but I still want it over the photo. So I might go to effects over here, select outline, change my outline to maybe the color pink from the background. I think my thickness is a bit larger. And there we go. I've got a, a design. Um, once you're finished, you can then you can choose to name your file. So I'm going to say floral dreams design. And that's now going to be really easy for me to find and search within my Canva. Highly recommend naming your designs. And when you're finished, you can choose to then share it. You've got a few different options down here. You can share directly to social media, but I usually prefer just to download it myself. If you want to share the design with someone else that wants to edit it, you can do so here. And I can go to, I can either press download here or I can press more. And I can select all the different options that are available to me, but I'm going to choose download and I can choose to change the file type here to PNG, which is a great one for social media posting. I can make it a PDF or any other options in here. I can choose if it needs to have a transparent background, compress the file. And then when I'm happy, I can press download. This file has now been saved to my computer, ready for me to do whatever I desire with. And so that's a bit of a basic overview of a few key features inside Canva and a few of the key updates. It's not too much harder to get around and you will get used to it quite quickly if you are used to the old interface. And I promise I've been using it for a month or two now and I'm very much enjoying it and I've almost forgotten what the old interface was like. So enjoy it. Give yourself some time. Everything new takes some time to learn, but it is a really robust version. And if you do find something that you're unhappy with and how the interface is working, just go to file and suggest improvement. And there you can give a suggestion. And I've done this before and it actually got changed. Making sure that you don't give up, you will enjoy this once you've gotten used to it. So thank you for joining me. I hope you love this one. If you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe and you like this video so that I can keep creating incredible content for you around Canva, design and graphics. And make sure you let me know in the comments which of these features or which part of the new interface you're really enjoying or excited to try.